Okay, I think we are just about good to go. So first of all, hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Baz Kinder. I see a lot of familiar names in the attendee list, which is great. So hi, guys. And uh, I'm not by myself today. I'm joined by a few of my colleagues. Just before they introduce themselves, why are we here? While well, we are here to talk about the retirement of Project Online, we need to understand what's the announcements, what are the timelines, what does that mean for you, and what do next steps look like? So that is really the topic for today, but I'm going to go through and introduce some of my colleagues who have dialed in as well. I'll start with Steve Bennett. Steve, do you want to say a quick hello? Hi, Steve Bennett. I'm Head of Engineering here at Wellington. Been with the company for just over 10 years and in the Microsoft project space for just over 20 years. Very good. And Sarah? Hi there, my name's Sarah Ng. I'm um, a client manager here at Wellington. Some of you guys may know me and I work alongside Bradley. Nice segue into Bradley. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, nice to see so many um, people on here already, but I'm Brad. I'm an account manager here at Wellington and have been for the last two years. Very good. So I'm going to turn my camera off just so that I can really focus on the presentation itself. Again, just to reiterate, today we're going to be talking about Project Online. There was an announcement a couple of weeks ago saying that it's going to retire. And as a result, people are going to be wondering, well, where does that leave us? What are my options? Where can we go? And it's a bit of a bit of a sad moment for me personally, and maybe for Steve as well, because we've been implementing this since 2013. So it's been part of our family, so to speak, for around 12 or so years. But it's not a time to be emotional. It's time to be logical and to plan what's next. And I should also point out that this is the very first event in a series of webinars that we will be pushing out to really deep dive into some of the topics that we are going to be touching upon today. Before we talk about the actual topic for today, I'm going to take a step back because many of you that have dialed in probably don't really know who Wellington are. So we as a company, we have been around since 2001 and we've got three primary service areas spanning technology, consultancy and training. You can, of course, learn a lot more by going to wellington.co.uk. And uh, if I take a, a step back to technology, we've been a Microsoft Gold project and portfolio management partner now since 2009. And last year, we were also recognized as being one of the top four partners globally in this space. So you are in safe hands with us. And we've been working with a really eclectic mix of organizations since 2001 to deploy technology or to help organizations really make a step change in their approach to project management generally. On the website, we've got over 50 case studies. I do recommend you go and have a read. Some of them are very relevant to the topic for today. And we've also got multiple sites. We are all based in the UK, but we've got teams in Spain, Ireland, India, and the US as well. Okay, so let's really focus on this recent announcement around Project Online retiring. And there's been a long path to get to this point. The writing's been on the wall for quite a while. Back in 2018 is when Microsoft announced the brand new project service. They said that that was coming along and that going forward, that is really where the innovation would focus, not on Project Online. And in more recent times, Microsoft also announced that workflows that work currently within Project Online by April 2026, they are being deprecated. They will no longer work. So again, there's there's been signs over the years that Project Online would be going at some point, but the announcement did come as a bit of a surprise to many, especially as there's only a one-year timeline in which to migrate onto something else. So understanding why this has been announced, well, the key reasoning really being that Project Online is built on legacy architecture. In fact, the underlying architecture, and Steve might talk about this a bit later, it's built on SharePoint 2013. And all of Microsoft's focus is now very much on the new planner, planner premium, and of course, towards Copilot and the Power Platform generally. In terms of timelines, Project Online, it's not being switched off straight away. It will completely function as it does today, minus the workflows after April 2026, but it will be around until September the 30th, 2026. That is the official retirement date. And at that point, when you go to access Project Online, 
it will no longer be there. It will no longer be accessible. And I know that right now, a year away seems like a long time away, but trust me, it's not. And it's something that does need to be thought about and planned for well in advance. And I did post about this last Friday. I'd said that in reality, to migrate to a new tool or to adopt a new tool it requires many phases, many stages, lots of work beforehand. And this takes time. And typically, if I think about migration, depending on the scope, the approach, the complexity, you could be looking at anywhere from around three months to six months. It could take less time. It could take more time. But starting this journey now gives you quite a buffer to be able to do this in good time without any risk of losing anything. Because again, September the 30th, 2026, Project Online gets switched off. So you need to plan now, not in April, not in June, July. It needs to start straight away. When you think about moving away from Project Online, you're going to be wondering, well, what are the options? What could we feasibly use to replace Project Online? Mm -hmm. Inevitably, you're going to be looking at a variety of tools. You might be looking at the Gartner Magic Quadrant, seeing what tools are recommended. What I would say to you is to take a step back and just think about your general IT strategy. According to Copilot, over 70% of organizations worldwide use Microsoft 365. And I'm betting that you're on this call because you probably use Project Online. As a result of that, everybody on this call has access to M365. So it makes sense to stick with a solution that's available in the same platform. It means that you've got a unified ecosystem. IT are going to be happy because it means enhanced security, enhanced compliance, you're all in the same cloud. And if you belong to a larger organization, the chances are you've got an enterprise licensing agreement in place, which means that you're going to get the licensing at a very good price. And a point that I'll touch upon a bit later is that actually, if you've got Project Online already, you're pretty much licensed for the new stuff that's coming down the pipe. There are disadvantages to using M365 and something else like Smartsheets on Monday. I won't dwell upon that. If you would like to learn more, then you can go to our website and read the article that's signposted there at the bottom, why Microsoft is the best alternative to monday.com. And by the way, we will also circulate the slide deck to everybody that's dialed in. So you will be able to go in, click on some links and read that information at your leisure. Outside of the obvious competitors to the Microsoft solutions, there will be others that you come across that state that they are powered by Microsoft. Are they really? Well, they might be, might not be. And really, when you are evaluating solutions that profess to be powered by Microsoft, there are some obvious questions that you should really be asking. Is the entire solution powered by Microsoft or is it certain components? Is it the main app that sits in Power Apps? Is it just the reporting engine that sits in Power BI? Is it simply the fact that the app itself might be hosted in M365 or Azure? A fundamental point is very much the scheduling engine. It's generally the heartbeat of any project and portfolio management solution. And I know from experience that some might be using Microsoft Planner Premium, the latest iteration from Microsoft, but it might be a completely proprietary scheduling engine. And that could pose some longer term problems that I'll cover off in just a few seconds. And something that I've seen firsthand is that many of these applications but again, state that they're powered by Microsoft do have external integrations and external app callouts, which pose a few issues. It uh, might rely on a external server to operate. If that external server goes down, well, that's going to cause issues. And maybe the call out are to apps that sit in different servers, different countries. And Steve, if you don't mind just unmuting, I know you made a really good point earlier on. What are the other potential pitfalls with some of these other apps that might have external call outs? Hi, yeah, the biggest issue is a lot of these external source codes get updated without the clients being made aware, uh, resulting in the execution of code that's been unverified and potentially un unauthorized for your environment. Thank you very much, Stephen. By the way, I should have pointed out right at the very beginning that you are welcome to ask questions. There's a Q&A panel at the very top of Microsoft Teams. Please raise your questions. Bradley and Sarah and potentially Steve will be looking at those and responding as appropriate. And of course, we are going to leave around 10 minutes at the end just to do live Q&A. So taking into account the potential pitfalls and the questions that I've raised, 
what are the real world impacts? So if you go with something that states that it's powered by Microsoft, but it might not be entirely, then you might open yourself up to additional non-Microsoft licensing. In scenarios where you're using a proprietary scheduling engine, you could be locked into that vendor. You wouldn't be able to go to somebody else and say, help me out, because these components, they generally are black box. There's very little that we or other partners can do with them. And where we talk about external integrations or app callouts, think about data sovereignty. And the final point that I'm going to raise on this slide is around longevity. And having been in this space since 2005, I can tell you that I've seen lots of dedicated project and portfolio management solution providers come and go. The only constant has been Microsoft. They were here yesterday, they're here today, they'll be here tomorrow, and that's why I'd always recommend going with native Microsoft apps like Planner Premium or something that's fully built around the Power Platform, which is something that we can obviously provide. So let's now look at some of the core options that we have to migrate you away from Microsoft Project Online. The very first option I'm going to talk about is Microsoft Planner Premium with the Wellington Accelerator Plus. And combined, this is really a reimagining of Project Online, but built on modern architecture. And Planner Premium in itself is going to be evolving, I would think, quite a bit in the coming months. But let's stand back, look at some of the key benefits. The first one being that it provides a modern and very intuitive interface and a seamless user experience. So for those of you using Project Online, which I imagine is everybody on the call, you know that you've got Project Web App and then each project also then has the project site. It leads to a slightly disjointed experience. With Accelerator Plus, that is no longer a thing. It's also built entirely on the modern Dataverse architecture as opposed to SharePoint. The new solution is also AI ready and it features native Copilot integration. And at Wellington, we're also getting ready to launch Marty, a PMO AI agent. More information on that landing within the next couple of weeks. All in all, the new solution, much better in terms of collaboration. It also links in with M365 groups and the Teams integration is something that I will be demonstrating in a future webinar. The Accelerator Plus also has better governance and workflow capability that's underpinned by Microsoft Power Automate. And compared to the workflows that you had in Project Online, which were built using SharePoint to underpin your phases and your stage gates within the new world, they're much more interactive and you have many more options available. The new solution is also more scalable and I would say better suited to a variety of maturity levels, suiting those that are maybe accidental project managers right the way up to power users within the PMOs. And what we've found when we've gone in and deployed Planner Premium with the Accelerator Plus and maybe replace Project Online or Project Server is that the adoption rates have been significantly higher. And that's really down to the more intuitive and modern interface to a large extent. And the final point on this particular section is around licensing. And the good news being that the licenses you currently use for Project Online, whether that's Planner Plan 1, Planner on Project Plan 3 or 5, they will work for Planner Premium. And if you are already licensed with Power BI to access reporting, again, the same license applies. The only additional component would be Microsoft Power Apps, which you would need for the Accelerator Plus, which in effect replaces PWA and the project site experience. Now, I'm stepping away from Planner Premium and the Accelerator Plus for those organizations that need to retain the power and the look and feel that's offered by Project Online, the obvious sidestep option would be Microsoft Project Server Subscription Edition. Exactly the same user experience. It also integrates with Project Desktop. It can be deployed either on-premise or in the cloud. And we can provide complete data migration to ensure complete continuity as we've stated there. However, the one thing that you do need to bear in mind is that Project Server at the moment is expected to be supported until at least 2031. We are waiting for further details around that, but for the foreseeable future, it's a great alternative and the obvious migration route from Project Online. And the final solution that I'm going to outline is Dynamics 365 Project Operations. And I'm primarily doing this because it was named on the official retirement announcement from Microsoft. For me personally, it's not really a viable alternative to Project Online because it's very much designed fundamentally to address a different use case to what the PMO would normally be working on. It's geared towards 
sales focused organizations professional services organizations that might be capturing sales opportunities in dynamics 365 those opportunities are one they become project people then report time against them and that information is used to drive invoicing and billing so not quite a fit for the typical pmo or project team and the last point on that is licensing wise it's quite a bit more expensive compared to the plans that i've already outlined which was planner plan one planner and project plan three or five it's a bit more expensive so i'm going to park that one to one side so what are the migration options? Well, option number one would be a move to Microsoft Planner Premium with the Accelerator Plus. And this would particularly suit organizations that want to move to the modern platform and go with something that is perhaps a bit more future proof. In terms of migrating the data, we can migrate quite a bit of it. Of course, you might want to take a greenfield approach and I'll cover that on the next slide. The other migration option that exists is a like for like migration to Microsoft Project Server subscription edition. We can take all of your data and put it into Project Server. The only element that would require a bit of rework would be the Power BI report. We'd have to rewire them in essence to consume the data from a SQL database as opposed to a no data feed, which is not available with Project Server as it is with Project Online. Something that organizations should also think about is the data that currently sits generally within Project Online. If you're not migrating it in its entirety to Project Server or maybe even to Planner Premium and the Accelerator Plus, you might still have a need to archive it for legal reasons to be able to audit the data or to comply with your internal data retention policies generally. So we can take all of the data from Project Online and put it into a SQL database. That way it remains available. OK, let's now consider our implementation approaches, one of which is, of course, migration, as covered on the previous slide. An option that I think will be a great fit for the majority of organizations would actually be to go for a greenfield deployment, possibly of Microsoft Planner Premium with the Wellington Accelerator Plus. And I think this in particular would suit organizations that have been using Project Online for quite a while. Maybe that environment contains a lot of legacy data, a lot of outdated configuration as well it's a chance for you to declutter and start from a blank canvas and you might still want to migrate some of your in-flight projects but you might do that manually so greenfield is a great option and actually maybe the most cost effective approach as well especially compared to a migration something else you might want to consider and i know that this is definitely a route that some of our existing customers have already opted for is to go for a hybrid deployment this really provides organizations with the best of both worlds project server being used for existing large-scale complex projects that are being managed in project online whilst planner in the accelerator plus would be used for wider teams or for brand new initiatives going forward a common question that then arises is how do we get full overarching visibility of the entire project portfolio in terms of where projects are at, which resources are being used where? Well, we can bridge the gap through Power BI. We simply take the data from Project Server and from Planner Premium and the Accelerator Plus, put it into a data warehouse, and we can visualize it all together in Power BI through a suite of reports and dashboards. OK, well, that brings us on to next steps. And I'm sure by this stage, you've got a ton of questions. You want to understand what is the best approach for you to maybe adopt to move away from Project Online. So please go ahead, scan that QR code, book in one of those Project Online migration clinics with myself, and we can have those initial conversations. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. And uh, I've really whizzed through that. So, guys, we're now going to open up the floor to Q&A. And in order to do this, I am going to turn my camera back on. I'll ask my colleagues as well to turn their cameras on as well. And uh, then you can see that we are here in real life. OK, I think that probably concludes this session.